They asked me to say a little something, and I think that its brevity is hopefully the sign of intelligence. And so I'm not going to say much. And I do find it kind of humorous today that this is a great Western New York story as the rest of the country is panicking about some snowfall. We all got together to celebrate some greatness with friends and family. And so, again, welcome here. Uh, I'd like to introduce a few people. First of all, the family of Corporal Richard Wazinski, daughter Carol. <laughs> welcome, Carol. Her husband, Paul, known to many as Mooch. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Father Zajac, chaplain of Sisters Hospital. Welcome, sir. Cousins uh, Ed and wife Ann Engel. Welcome. I'm going to throw the congressman right up here. Tell him again, welcome. Welcome. And Thank you, Michael. I appreciate it very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Michael Meltrider, uh, the post commander here. Uh, Alan Lee, who is the captain of the Honor Guard. Uh, Grand Island Supervisor Mary Cook. Mary, thank you for having us in your town. Uh, also, my colleagues in government, other colleagues in government, uh, John Soretto, a member of the State Assembly. Uh, John, it's great to have you here. And from Senator Mark Grisani's office, we have uh, Ron Shanes and Mike Little. Uh, also, Dan Frontera and uh, Dan McMahon, Senior Vice Commander, Dick Crawford, uh, Grand Island Town Board Member. Uh, as has been said, we also have Alan Lee. Oh, I, I did that already. I apologize. We have uh, Richard's the daughters, Carol and Antoinette, and Corporal uh, Lazinski's nephew, uh, a gentleman that I am very familiar with. Uh, Reverend Richard E. Duke Zajac, chaplain of Sisters Hospital. Richard Lazinski was born in 1929, Joseph Lazinski and Anna Szymanski. The son of a Polish immigrant, Richard was raised in the village of Kenmore uh, before joining the United States Coast Guard at the age of 17. Two years later, at the age of 19, he was transferred to the United States Marine Corps and later sent to serve in the Korean War. Exactly 63 years ago today, Corporal Brzezinski, a member of Company H, 3rd Battalion, 7th Marines, and 1st Marine Regiment, faced one of the toughest missions. Uh, Corporal Brzezinski became a member of the chosen few or the Frozen Chosen, names given uh, to the Marines who fought in the Battle of Chosen Reservoir in North Korea. During this battle, the Marines were confronted with the most extreme conditions imaginable. They were outnumbered, eight to one. It was one of the coldest winters ever recorded in North Korea, with temperatures reaching 20 below zero, and they were fighting some of the toughest terrains. On the very first day of the battle, November 27, 1950, Corporal Bozinski went above and beyond the call of duty, taking life-saving actions and bravery, and bravely serving against all odds when his country needed him the most. The citation for the Silver Star reads as follows. <clears throat> President of the United States of America takes pleasure in presenting the Silver Star to Corporal Richard J. The United States Marine Corps, for conspicuous gallantry while serving Company H, 3rd Battalion, 7th Marines, 1st Marine Division, uh, during action against enemy, enemy aggressors, uh, forces in Korea on November 27, 1950, when his unit was attacked and overrun by a superior hostile force, Corporal Wozinski quickly reorganized his squad and deployed them to localize the enemy penetration. Moving from end to end of his unit, he placed the men in advantageous firing positions, ignoring the heavy enemy fire directed in his area. Courageously remaining in an exposed position, he confidently and effectively supervised return fire, which directly aided the company in halting the hostile advances. In a brief respite, which followed, he evacuated the wounded and, at his own initiative, skillfully improved his defenses. When the enemy attacked again, he boldly led his men through intense small arms, machine gun, and 
grenade fire, engaging the hostile troops in fierce hand-to-hand -hand combat, dislodging the enemy from their well-entrenched positions and securing the flank, covering the, reorgan covering the reorganization of his company, uh, he successfully warded off hostile probes until the remainder of the unit was in position. By his aggressive determination, outstanding leadership, unwavering devotion to duty in the face of heavy, heavy enemy opposition, Colonel Lazinski upheld the highest traditions of the United States Naval Service. That pretty much says it all. His service that day saved many lives and earned Corporal Lazinski the Silver Star. But like so many of his humble veterans, he never sought recognition for his passing in 1991. He was discharged on July 15, 1952. The service didn't end there. He transferred to the United States Marine Corps Reserves, where he served the remainder of his military career and also worked in the private sector at Wickwire Steel Company and General Motors. Richard's daughter, Carol, uh, recently called our office, requested assistance securing some of her father's medals and a formal recognition of his service. Uh, as I mentioned, like so many uh, veterans uh, who are very humble uh, in the service of their country, they rarely uh, seek the recognition themselves. But it's appropriate, family members do, because that family history uh, is a significant mark uh, of a family's uh, commitment uh, to duty and to country and to bravery and all those things that we value and cherish uh, as Americans. So today we come to you together to honor Richard Wazinski and in the presence of his family, uh, present them with the following awards. The Combat Action Ribbon, Korea. Uh, the Presidential Unit Citation with One Bronze Star. The Marine Corps Good Conduct Medal. Navy Occupation Service Medal with European Class. National Defense Service Medal. Korea Service Medal with three bronze campaign stars, Republic of Korea Presidential Unit Citation, United National Service Medal, Republic of Korea War Service Medal and Cold War Certificate, and the Silver Star, one of the highest military decorations uh, for valor that can be awarded to a person serving in the United States Armed Forces. Our office is also honored to present a flag that was flown over the United States Capitol uh, in his honor. We are thankful, thankful to the leaders and the members of the Charles N. Glover Memorial BFW Post 9249, which is graciously hosting us today. So with that, uh, come forward. Certificate of Authenticity to say that it actually did fly over the Capitol. <laughs> Citation on behalf of the uh, New York State Senate for claiming the day in your father's name. So oh. thank you very much for your father's dedication to this country. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Crawford and I are here representing the town board, and 
and of course we're most pleased that this ceremony is occurring in our town. Grateful that Carol became part of the auxiliary here to be, uh, you know, to put us into this uh, particular celebration. And it seems fitting that on the day before Thanksgiving, we are here to say thank you to someone who didn't get to hear it in person, but certainly through his family will know and appreciate how much we all value the um, service that he gave. And if anything else, it, it made me um, pause as the congressman was reading the citation. In the the actual decisions that got made by that corporal on that day changed the lives of people. And that's a good lesson for all of us and something we can teach the future generations that what you do and what you're thinking about and the actions that you take have extreme consequences, and in this case, extremely positive consequences. The citation that we have is signed by the board. It's sealed with the seal of the town, and it goes through much of what has been said. So I'll present it to you, and thank you so much. Thank you. Father Duke, would you like to lead us in prayer? Remember, is there anything for your uncle? Let's have our heads in prayer. Uh, let me God for this Thanksgiving Eve. Tomorrow we'll be thanking God for the many blessings and gifts that he's given us. Today we especially thank God for the gift of my uncle Richard, who so valiantly served this country. We thank you not only for him, but for all the other veterans who have made it possible for us to be here and be safe and stay free. Make us mindful, Lord, of all those people many times who do not get recognized, who do not get thanked, and that we in our own ways show our thanksgiving by living out the values, the principles, Mark people like my uncle Richard in their life. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 something to kind of close this out. Sure. We, uh, I'd like to take a moment. This is a great day and this is a great opportunity. Everything that Carol's done here is wonderful, and her father and the recognition. We have a group of people who go out as an honor guard night after night, volunteer their time at various funeral homes, memorials, Veterans Day. They're out in bad weather, they're out in the heat of Fourth of July, going to the various places. And you really can't say that at Veterans Day. But again, some of the people over here in the white shirts have taken off today from work. They just show up and they show up and they show up. And uh, just want to take a second to thank all of you, each and every one of you, because it, it helps everyone. <laughs> the ladies auxiliary of our post has put on some desserts and some coffee and drinks at the bar. And I hope everybody can stay and enjoy some uh, camaraderie. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.